A lot of chatter on TCG about 3D printing lately. <laughs> you. Yes. Me. For those of you who don't know, that's Devin Jones, 3D model philanthropist, engineer by day, creator of OpenForge, Thingiverse, sex symbol, and general annihilative threat to all things scratch-built crafting. I will convert you. Never. I'm a cardboard man through and through. Always have been, always will be. Aren't you, like, the co-creator of Jew Tiles? Alright, cardboard man. I got an idea. Why don't you make something of mine, uh, and I'll make something yours? Yeah, dig it. That sounds good. And then, you will see why 3D printing is superior. Alright, so Devin recently released these new modular bridges under OpenForge. They're available on Thingiverse. So I'm just going to draw inspiration from them and try and craft something. We're really just expanding on the techniques from the first four episodes of this channel, so I'm going to move kind of brisk. Get double corrugated cardboard. Of course, we're going to return it to square before we start measuring and cutting. And then cut out a rectangle that is two and three eighths by two and a half inches. And do cut it so that the corrugation is on the long sides, like you see here. Cut some thin construction paper or very thin cardstock and hot glue it under the two short ends. All right, so this is what we have so far. And now onto chipboard, my favorite crafting material. This is graphics medium chipboard, cheap, sturdy, easy to cut. If you want to buy some, there's a link in the description below. Uh, if you use that exact link, it's an easy way to support the channel at no extra cost to you. I just get a small kickback from Amazon. Anyway, need to cut a piece that's two and a half inches wide. And then measure two rectangles on it that are one and a half inches tall. And measure and mark out the center, just like you see here. Then take your compass, set it to a radius of three quarters of an inch, and draw it out. Now we can cut out those two rectangles, and then cut out the half circles. You could freehand cut these with your utility or crafting knife, just do it in several passes. Oh, and draw a line down the center like this, I forgot to do that earlier. Then a healthy bead of hot glue on the foundation, and stick it to a wall, just above that line. Same for the other side. Then we get our Dollar Tree foam board, the cheap stuff because the paper peels off of it so easily. If you can't get this brand and can only get good normal foam board, try rubbing alcohol to free up the paper. Anyway, cut a half inch wide strip and then chop that down to two and a half inches long and texturize it as desired. I like to do offset bricks. So this is a standard bridge tile. We're gonna set it aside for a moment and go build the other kind, which is a transition tile. Once again, double corrugated cardboard, cut two rectangles this time at two and three eighths by two and a half. Then cut a smaller rectangle at two and three eighths by one and a quarter. Hot glue the two big ones together, and then hot glue the smaller one on top, flush with one side like this. Once again, corrugation cladding, so just paper or really thin cardstock. And for the walls, chipboard as before. Gonna measure out a rectangle, just as before, two and a half by one and a half. But then, on the short end, measure a mark in the center and freehand draw a curve to connect it to the opposing corner. So the curve starts in the corner and ends three quarter inch inwards on the other side. So cut that out and mark it as your standard. Always use this piece as a template to trace your wall pieces. Never use it as a wall and never make copies of copies. Always trace this exact piece and save it. That's how you ensure that your tiles always look symmetric and neat. So trace and cut out two of those. Then a good amount of hot glue on the foundation and attach the wall. Same for the other side. Note, I didn't bother covering the corrugation on that big inside surface because it's never going to be seen. 
Again, foam for the interior wall. Little trick to help with that curve. Cut the big foam rectangle, then the notch for the step, then dry fit it and trace the curve with your pencil like this. Use a fresh sharp blade and you should be able to cut that curve very easily. From here it's the same story we've done time and again. For a more in-depth description, check out episode 95. I'll throw a card for that on the screen right now. But to quickly blast through it, cereal box, cut out a whole bunch of one and a quarter inch squares, cut out a whole bunch of one and an eighth inch squares, round off the corners, hot glue a small one to a big one. Base everything in black. Kitchen sponge on your dark and light grays. And pick out two or three bricks per wall with plain brown. Lastly, chop a quarter inch off the spaces and hot glue them in place. So again, here's the source image, drawing inspiration from the new Open Forge Bridges by Devin Jones. And here's the crafted ones. With a bit of extra thought, you could probably implement the cardboard locking system we covered back in episode 95. I'll be using these not necessarily in the next couple episodes, but in the near future, I'm going to show these more in context, so this isn't the last you're going to see of them. But the basics are illustrated here. You can see some normal dungeon tiles from episode 95, and the transition tile which gets up to the bridge elevation. So it's nice and scenic. And also they fit nicely in our storage rack, just like all our other tiles, because they still adhere to that 2.5 inch by 2.5 inch form factor. Alright, now let's go see what Devin's been up to. First off, I'm going to make a very basic Wylock tile design. Now everything in 3D printing is in metric, so the first thing I need to do is math out the tile's dimensions in metric. An inch is 25.4 millimeters, so that makes the tile 63.5 millimeters on the side. We'll make it 6.5 millimeters thick with the squares 8.75 and the walls 19 tall and 6.35 or a quarter inch thick. I'm going to use this as sort of a bounding box to make sure that the design fits in the right dimensions. Next, I'm going to pull in a floor and resize it to fit the new dimensions and try and bring the surface down so that it fits with the uh, Wylock sizing and with the uh, height of the squares. Following that, I'm going to want to bring in some dungeon walls. I'll need to resize those too. I'll move them into place, but they will be way too tall. So next I'll need to create a cube that will act as sort of a filter against the wall using an operation that's called a boolean difference to cut them down to size. Next I'm going to take the wall and I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to use the floor segment that we've got here as kind of a guide to make sure that I'm not overflowing the boundaries. So I'll move it into sculpt mode and then I'm just going to sand it down a little bit using the smooth operator. Now I've added a few more walls here because we're making a dead end. I've already boolean unioned the pieces uh, but we'll need to clean it up so we're going to move into sculpt mode and from there into dine topo so that the detail doesn't get too crazy uh, which results in really huge file sizes. We'll set it to subdivide collapse and relative detail. <laughs> Looks like I made a classic error. When using dine topo you really need to have the scale set to 1 on all axes or the sculpting gets stretched out in weird ways. So pop out to object mode, hit control A and select scale. That will reset X, Y, and Z to 1 without uh, changing the shape of the model. Then pop back into sculpt mode and start to smooth out the parts of the corner that look a little bit off. So the fact that I uh, unioned two stone walls uh, right into each other is why this looks a little weird because you're catching little snippets of one stone through the other. So I'm just going to use the sculpting to sand off the uh, sharp edges on this and make it look a little bit more natural. Last thing to do is just to export and then we go print. After the tiles are done 3D printing, 
I black bombed them using a flat black spray primer. Next thing that we're going to want to do is add some magnets into the base. The idea here is that if we have magnets in the base of all the tiles, they'll snap together and hold together on the table. However, all of the bases that are printed here also have open lock ports, which work sort of like Wylock's cardboard lock ports. Given that I've designed these based off of Wylock's tile designs, I figure we should give them the same paint scheme. So we'll start off with a dark gray. We'll be sponging this on, but because the squares are printed attached, we'll need to get some of that gray down into the crevices for it to look right. This means using the sponge in some parts a bit more like a brush to get it in the crevices. Next, you can sponge a light gray on. You'll want it to be a lot lighter than the dark gray, uh, aiming for more of a coverage about 25%. Finally, we're going to take a light brown. We're going to paint in two of the bricks on each of the tiles just to give some variety to the appearance. Now that they're all done, we can see the magnets uh, pulling them together. I really enjoy setting these down on the table this way. It has a, a nice design aesthetic in that when you put them down, they just always kind of end up in exactly the right place and they pop with a nice, satisfying click. All kidding aside, 3D printing is just another crafter's tool. I do a ton of crafting myself. I just tend to focus it around something that I've 3D printed. A lot of people who prefer to do scratch build but have 3D printers will make something but then 3D print elements that they can put into the object that they're creating. Many of the models that I've created have been inspired by the videos of the TCG Guild Masters and videos that have been done by many other people in the community. There's a constant flow of ideas on 3D printing is just one great technique among many. I've got a ton of stuff on Thingiverse and I release about four new things a month. You can also find a whole bunch of materials on GitHub. I have a repository there where I have bits of stone, wood, all sorts of elements that you can use to make a, a 3D printed model. All of it's uh, released under the Creative Commons license, so you're free to use it, remix it, and make something awesome that you can. I want to thank Wylock for asking me to do this video. I'd also like to thank my wife, who does a ton of behind the scenes work for OpenForge. And without her efforts, the project just wouldn't be possible. So all kidding aside, Devin has a prolific body of work available on Thingiverse under his OpenForge line. And if you use that stuff, please be sure to consider checking out his Patreon. The guy does a lot of stuff for the community for free. Speaking of Patreon, all of his patrons are going to receive copies of the models that he made in the episode here today. And they'll also be available on Heroes Horde for our usual rock bottom prices. I want to say a big thank you to Devin. This was a lot of fun to put together. Very cool guy. And hopefully you've seen this as an example of how two people in totally different mediums can find ways to find cross inspiration and something to do. I am Wylock. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.